Hi there, and welcome everyone. We have a, another virtual roundtable uh, brought to you by GCOM Manufacturing. Uh, this time we're doing things a little bit different. Uh, we're switching it up, and we have a, a virtual roundtable with GCOM Manufacturing and GCOM Building Services. Most of you out in the industry um, have heard very little about GCOM Building Services, but this is an opportunity that we wanted to bring to you to, so that you can better understand the project management solutions uh, that we have available. So uh, we are bringing this round table to you virtually. Um, you can watch it on demand at your own time. And the title of this uh, round table is pods plus GCBS equals turnkey squared. The simple equation for clean room project management solutions. I am very honored uh, to be joined by my colleagues today. Uh, we have four people on the panel, um, Peter Makowinski, Roman Bokamp, Blake Williams, and Mark Taylor. So I am going to turn it over to them. Uh, each of them play a role on um, the GCOM manufacturing team as well as the GCOM building services team. However, uh, there are a couple who are more so involved on the GCOM building services team. So I'll let them introduce themselves, and I will start with you, Roman. Hi, I'm Roman Basham, Director of uh, GCON Building Services. Uh, I run the day-to-day -day operations. All right, thanks, Roman. Uh, Pete? Yep, uh, Pete Makowinski, Director of Sales Engineering at GCOM Manufacturing. Um, our team is involved in upfront client engagement, um, scope definition to uh, facilitate our GCOM pod solutions. Thanks, Pete. Uh, Mark? Hi, my name is Mark Taylor. I'm the Director of Engineering and Project Management at GCOM Manufacturing. Uh, I oversee the group that handles pods on their entire life cycle to ensure that we meet all the clients' needs. Excellent. Last but certainly not least, you, Blake. Uh, Blake Williams, VP of Operations. Um, originally with GCOM Manufacturing for six years. Uh, basically take care of all of the manufacturing, project management, supply chain groups uh, uh, in general, making sure that they're all working and satisfied and, and, and smoothly running. Um, started working with GCBS uh, just over a year ago. Got that thing off the ground. So now Roman and I kind of collaborate together on a daily basis. Great, thank you all very much. Um, we like to do these virtual roundtables very casually um, in a conversational type format. So what you're going to hear over the next 30 minutes uh, is the five of us having a conversation. So uh, we have a few questions that have been commonly asked um, in various platforms. And so we wanted to utilize this opportunity to answer the questions from the industry and give you um, some light into what we do behind the scenes um, and what we do in the forefront and hopefully give you a better understanding how GCOM building services and GCOM manufacturing work together hand in hand. So um, the first question I have for you guys, um, what is GCOM building services? So GCOM Building Services is a company that provides diversified services for pharmaceutical and biotech construction projects and capital projects. Our main focus is um, on small startup companies, as well as companies expanding into phase two, three development. And our primary focus is on helping clients who don't have the bandwidth presently to have their own manufacturing facility to be able to provide um, to be able to provide that uh, manufacturing capabilities in-house that they otherwise wouldn't have. Got it. Um, and that's pretty straightforward, um, which kind of leads us into the next question. Why was GCOM Building Services created? Yeah, I'll take that one. Uh, so, you know, uh, through the years of GCON manufacturing, we were we were seeing a lot of repeatable uh, uh, obstacles that every project was coming across uh, related to offsite build and modularization. Whenever you're really talking about offsite build, there's there's an it, it's a slightly different type of construction that that not everybody's used to, and 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 we were seeing the same things happening uh, uh, routinely. So. What we wanted to do was create a group that could that could help with that uh, 
with that issue that, that was being raised by our product. Uh, so we were seeing, you know, it was, it was always the same, uh, just general general items that, that we had to to uh, bridge a gap on. Um, sometimes there were overlaps, sometimes there were gaps. So we wanted to just really, really find something that could that could meet in the middle. Um, it's a lightweight group. Uh, we wanted to be very agile. We wanted to kind of um, assist clients anywhere where we needed to and step in and help. So we're really trying to be an A to Z solution to make sure that there's there's um, assistance there. Uh, but we also routinely will act as enhancement. So, you know, if you've got a need for project management support from the owner side, from the general contractor side, uh, if you need GMP assistance, those sort of things, that's where we can come in and help you. Pretty well stated, Blake. Um, a, a lot of the question that, you know, people who do know about GCOM building services, um, there's a question out there, you know, how is it different from a general contractor? You know, your typical general, general contractor out there, how's GCOM building services different from that? So your general contractor, um, you know, they have a lot of bandwidth and, and production of different kind of facilities, but one of the main things that sets GCOM building services apart is our primary focus and our main direction is in pharmaceutical and biotech industry. So we have an orientation towards understanding the regulations and requirements necessary in that industry. We can bring that knowledge to the table and help our clients get a better product delivered in the end. And we're also versed in modular construction. So we can bring that experience to the table to help fill that gap uh, between designers and contractors to help eliminate over cost and schedule overruns by giving them a clear understanding of the scope of work and there aren't any crossovers between the scope of work on the pods or other modular construction methodologies that would otherwise drive cost and schedule uh, that's really contradictory to the owner. And, and also, we don't, you know, at G, GCOM Building Services, we don't own, you know, uh, local contractor licensing for for any states. We're not we're not interested in getting in uh, on the level that uh, we would we would be, you know, managing day to day subcontract work. What we're really doing is trying to enhance that general contractor and help the ones that uh, don't necessarily have the GMP background or experience and 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 help them bridge that gap. So, you know, it, it's really more about letting them do their work. Um, you know, typically general contractors at, at local areas or, or in their regions really, really know the permitting process well for that area, really know how to add their own value. So what we're doing is looking to, to enhance and offset that. So um, it, it's just a slightly different scope for us and what we're looking to do. Yeah, that makes total sense. I think, you, you know, you hit the nail on the head. I think the key there is, you know, bridging the gap. Um, and especially even when it comes to pods and modular uh, construction, GCBS has that knowledge, which uh, brings me to the next question. How does GCBS interact with GCOM manufacturing and clients? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can take that one, uh, Brittany. Um, on the sales engineering side, we're, we're typically involved with our clients um, early on. Uh, we're going working with them on, on scope definition, but there's a lot of activities that are outside of what we can support, um, you know, from GCON manufacturing. And uh, when clients struggle with those efforts or they're not sure how to approach it, that's typically where we would be kind of um, consulting with our building services team and seeing if, uh, you know, based on this project, if it's a good fit uh, for them and, and we'll typically um, then engage both the client and building services to to talk a little bit about that that scope outside of what we can support on the GCOM manufacturing side and um, helping to foster a more comprehensive service uh, package for them. Yeah, and, and just to build on that a little bit, uh, GCOM will engage building services ideally at the beginning of a project while we're still doing our, our, uh, our initial scoping. But throughout the life cycle of the project, we'll continue to work with the leadership uh, between GCOM Building Services on a project, uh, typically uh, through through our weekly meetings or, or more often than that, just to ensure that we're continuing to provide the best possible product for our clients. Yeah. And Mark, you just uh, you mentioned a, uh, a time to engage, um, but when is the best time to engage GCBS uh, when it comes to a new facility or facility expansion? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's always important to start engagement early. Um, a lot of times um, on the on the GCOM manufacturing side, we, we're engaged with them to help um, identify some budgetary estimates, and and a lot of times we're looking that through a lens in terms of the um, you know the scope of the pods. But the client is, is looking at this at a much greater lens and trying to figure out all the costs that go into a facility, um, but uh, but there is sometimes kind of overlap or gaps that, that could exist with um, if they're subcontracting to another party that uh, doesn't have much experience with pods. So um, I think build, bringing the building services team that has that, that experience integration, they can really fine tune some of that upfront um, budgetary assessments done by clients to, to put a more comprehensive estimate, more accurate estimate in place. And the other benefit of having building services on board early is we can help guide the client to making uh, more modular centric decisions based on their actual facility selection as well as their general direction on their design and their preferences for different aspects of their project and by having us on board and having the expertise that we bring to the table with our understanding of the pods and modular construction, um, we can help, again, bridge that knowledge gap so that the project overall is going to run more efficiently. And the sooner that we can be brought on board, the sooner that efficiency can be realized. And uh, GCBS, I mean, we routinely will get into, you know, facility assessments. We'll take a look at it you know, the, the feasibility of that of that uh, project and what the client's really looking for. So we can get in there and kind of help you with just your upfront determination on whether this is a, a, a go or no go. Um, very often we'll see if, if, if GCBS comes in a bit later, we'll see multiple different consultants and multiple different teams, you know, doing design, doing doing building, doing doing different pieces and, and you know, really what you want to do is harmonize and from very early on get your team set, especially when you want to go fast. You know, you don't want to be uh, requalifying contractors routinely. You don't want to be requalifying your core team members. So that's where we're able to come in and, and, and offer, you know, uh, qualified uh, uh, members of the group or are able to come in and, and look at the facility and say this one works. You know, this one this one would definitely work with what you're doing. Um, and and the, the other key to GCBS is is you know, it it's 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 kind of an interesting perspective, but we stay agnostic. We want really to serve the client first, and if if pods don't fit, you know, we make that clear, and, and we're we're very straightforward with here's how this is going to work. Um, if you make this decision, this is where this is going to go. You know, so there's there's different routes, um, and and as far as Roman and I go, you know, our our charge is not to to you know, drive a pod centric solution is really to get the owner uh, over the finish line. So, you know, we the sooner we get in there, the better chance we'll be at doing that. Um, I think, you know, just what you said, like, I think that's, you know, something that the industry really does appreciate about what we do. You know, we know we've known for a while, you know, pods are a tool and a toolbox of many options. So um, I like that you said that. Um, so speaking of, you know, engagement and, you know, the interaction with the customer, Talk about how from the start, how do you engage or get in contract with customers from the start? So our approach with customers is very flexible and very diversified. And the level of service that we offer is extremely flexible as well. When we get engaged with a client, the first thing that we like to find out is what are your internal needs? What do you need to have taken care of on your team? And can we help you take care of that? And once we find out what their needs are, we can negotiate and work with them in any way that that they desire to be engaged. So yeah, and the key there is that if, if we're not the fit, we'll we'll typically let them know very, very early on as well. So you know, and I'm talking about the GCBS side. So we've got partners that we can turn them on to. Um, if it's a much larger scale project and and, and they need, you know, uh, on-site resources immediately in, 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 in some market that we're not covering. 
you know, those are things that, that will will uh, work. But you know, early engagement, you know, it's it, it's free to have a conversation with Roman anytime. You know, it, it's uh, it's good stuff. But the, the key to it is is us feeling out and understanding what they need. You know, and and, and being agile enough to meet those needs. Yeah, yeah. So, like you said, you know, the cost to engage. I mean, there's really no cost. So, I mean, what do you say to? I know Pete, you on the sales side, if someone says, you know, come to you and they're interested in the project management services and they want to engage in it with GCBS early on, and I go, well, how much is this going to cost me? Can you address that to just make sure that you know the industry is clear on that and how our sales process from the beginning to the you know to this point? I mean, is it going to cost them a dime or not? <laughs> <laughs> yep, no, um, you know, it's a good point. And there's a lot of alignment with um, building services and GCOM manufacturing. Um, a lot of what we try to do on the GCOM manufacturing side is to provide, um, you know, some level of consultative uh, services up front to ensure that our, our product is a good fit for them. And, um, you know, when we see that there is um, a role for building services to play within a project, uh, we, we do establish that engagement with the client up front to discuss, you know, what uh, what the capabilities of our building services team could be. And a lot of that, that dialogue up front is, um, you know, uh, it is free of charge because we want to make sure that as a whole and that the team is, is uh, the right solution for the client in this project. Um, and then once we, we get a bit more in terms of scope definition and alignment of how building services could support the client, that's where you know, the building services team would, would support uh, putting together quotes based on the, the scope of work that's been identified. Um, so that there will be a you know cutoff point as with with any type of service of where the the, you know, the free services end and we get um, you know down and, and, and get um, the team mobilized to support the actual project. And it really ranges on on what we're offering. You know uh, we've done um, you know some some upfront estimating and and, and general you know uh, site selection assistance things like that. We can do those things for for very minute amounts but we can we can work it in ten thousand fifteen twenty thousand dollars i mean we can get some work done up front that might help you get to that decision that you need to make so you know it, it's a, for us about engaging the right people um and, and ensuring that we've got the right what you need and what you don't need um identified up front but uh you know routinely roman's estimates uh can can come out um you know, on the on the very small scale, but then we can also cover an entire project scope at the at the early phase and say here, you know, here's here's coverage for an owner's rep uh, uh, situation throughout the entirety of the project. So we can we can mix that as needed uh, to to suit what you need. Excellent. So you know, we've had we have some projects under our belt, um, quite a few projects under our belt. Um, what common scope gaps and planning oversights has GCOM Building Services identified in some of its projects to date? So I can I can take that. <clears throat> um, specifically, I think it's important to, to first like put yourself in a frame of reference. Uh, GCON does projects for very large companies, pharmaceutical companies, and we do projects for companies that maybe only have a uh, an end user process engineer, right? So across the board, R Roman can tailor his team to help support these different groups accordingly and we found great use across the board with with his approach uh, in general for the smaller projects a lot of times um, the the process engineers are not going to have the knowledge base of general construction or of understanding you know what what they have to carry in their numbers they also aren't technically savvy maybe in in the contract language or understanding when they're paying multiple groups uh, for the same services so he his team diligently goes through and helps coordinate and ensure that not only have they covered themselves, but they're not inefficiently wasting money on um, on, on, on covering things across several different vendors. In addition to that, um, in projects, uh, Roman's teams helped us identify potential scope gaps in delivery uh, and upfront sizing of utilities and services when all the information on the customer end maybe isn't there yet and they just need some help and support and getting information over the line. And they've also helped to make sure that, uh, that our customers, our clients have have uh, the proper um, teams available to do their acceptance testing and criteria work uh, when when we finally wrap up and, and close the book on the pods themselves. So um, 
in general, I found them to be a great uh, tool uh, for scope gap, and they also provide back great feedback to us, both through our weekly meetings and, um, you know, just with the relationships we built with him and his team and, and, you know, asking us to follow up on any any potential concerns they may have at any time. Right. And, and just, back to, or, sorry, go ahead, Pete. Go ahead. I was just going to say that to add to that, I mean, I think the, the owner's rep in, in certain projects, what we've seen is that there's multiple entities that are running in, in various swim lanes. And uh, sometimes the owner um, may not have the 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 depth in their team to provide a good amount of oversight or a cohesion for the group. So I, I think the owner's rep um, portion of, of what they can provide is, is key uh, or could have been key for some projects where um, you know, th there was that lack of oversight and um, you know master planning for the project. So um, having having that that level of of engagement in someone providing oversight of all the major stakeholders in a project is critical um, to, to getting a new facility up and running, whether it's a greenfield or brownfield or retrofit. Um, so we've seen that experience set in the past where, um, you know, those swim lanes aren't, aren't being coordinated appropriately at a higher level and building services, um, you know, is a great entity to, to cover that. Yeah, and specifically on the pods, what, what I've run into, um, in the past is going to be all of your services that are actually going into the pods. Where is the stop point? You know, where where is it stop being the host facility and start becoming the pods? And at GCON, you know, the GCON pod group, they know exactly what that is. Um, at GCBS, you know, we happen to have the the expert knowledge of what's going on inside the pods, but we also know what's the facility's requirements. So you're going to typically see gaps in automation, um, in uh, CQV services, in uh, process utilities, things like that are always, you know, going to be an overreach or an underreach, um, just depending on coverage and, and and depending on how well that particular vendor knows uh, the pods. Um, and then the, the pod guys, you know, they'll they'll very often uh, take a look and say, well, you know, here's what we do and here's where we boast, uh, give you the most uh, bang for your buck, if you will, such as, you know, GCON manufacturing is, is offsite build. We're really taking advantage of labor um, that's, that's in a vacuum. It's in a controlled environment. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a manufacturing floor. It's a process driven approach. Um, if you want that group to go travel to your site and do the entire construction practice, project, it wouldn't be as feasible, you know, so there are certain things that are not going to be um, advantageous for the pods to do. That's where GCBS really has that information and says, nah, that's not, that's not the guys for you. You know, here's, here's who you need to use. So it's, it's really identifying those lanes. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and speaking of lanes, um, I think if we put our mind in the mindset of a typical customer. Um, when they reach out to us, we don't know. We typically don't know where they are uh, in their project at the start of initiation of contact. For the most part, most customers, or some customers already have an A and E, and when we say A and E, architectural and engineering firm already in place. So, if that happens, what services can GCBS offer if an A and E is already in place? So. Building services uh, provides a pretty varied and diversified service offering. We would evaluate with the owner, you know, what their needs are and help fill those gaps. Okay. So one of the things that we commonly provide for our clients is an owner's rep service where we function as an extension of their staff management role, taking care of the overall oversight of their project uh from their point of view and in, in their best interest um so that they can do what they do on a regular basis which is probably not managing construction projects so we help to fill that gap on their end we can also provide construction management services if they don't already have somebody in place and outside of that we can bring a lot of our industry partners on board whether it's for cqv services or Maybe they need somebody that can help them with um, some additional testing and and uh, bringing their equipment up and on board. 
uh, we have several partners all over the industry that can provide any service that they can possibly need in order for them to complete their project. And you touched on something there, Roman, about uh, the CMs. You know, if there's a CM involved already as well, we can we can enhance that CM. You know, mm -hmm. really. So from a um, a modular expertise standpoint, from an offsite build expertise standpoint, we can actually uh, for that uh, that CM who's looking to take on a project that's got modular components, we can become their eyes and ears on the ground at that modular component site. We can uh, attend the FATs for them. We can ensure that, that their schedules are being met. And we understand through understanding what GCON uh, manufacturing goes through on a routine project, how that communication um, uh, looks, needs to look, and, and, and how the reporting needs to, to be structured. So we could easily enhance a CM who doesn't necessarily uh, have the background with offsite build by saying, here's here's the playbook, you know, here's how you run that to a uh, to the ensure that the day that you're expecting to have that unit, whatever it is, whether it be uh, offsite chillers or whether it be, uh, you know, just any any offsite build, really, um, we can we can step in and say, all right, here's here's the playbook. Here's how you get to that end zone. You know, and that, that's what we're looking for. Absolutely. Um, so, as far as geographically, what is GCOM Building Services geographical reach? And to that point, what market segments uh, does GCBS cover? Yeah, so we're you know we're heavily integrated into the the North American uh, region. We're geographically we're covering it uh, all over. Um, really, for us, it, it's it's about taking our um, our senior PMs and dropping them at that site if need be. Um, it, it's it's providing some upfront resources uh, remotely if need be. Uh, so we're we're typically in the North American market at this point. Um, we have manufacturing capabilities over in Europe, so it's going to be a natural progression for us to take GCBS over to the European market um, in the future. Uh, but for right now, we're, we're mainly focusing on the uh, North American continent. Um, you mentioned uh, segments as well. Um, you know, we can we can definitely. Well, uh, actually, Pete, you want to take that one? You want to talk a little bit on that? Yeah, and, and you know, this is really where we see that um, you know, building services is kind of an augmentation or, or supplementing what we do on the GCOM manufacturing side. Um, so the 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 segments are pretty much in tune. Um, so we're we're primarily focused on the the biotech pharmaceutical space and and all the t different types of modalities that are kind of entrenched there so you know we'll service uh, we'll support anything from osd applications to you know atmps um, and, and everything uh, in between there so um, we're really aligned with building services on on the uh, the biotech and, and pharmaceutical arena thing um so just to kind of wrap things up um give us an idea of the type of projects that gcom building services has taken on since its launch um you know thinking you know back you know two two years ago what projects ha has gcbs taken on um if you can share we, we like to keep a lot of our projects confidential for the sake of our customers, but what you can share, uh, Roman, I'm going to toss that over to you. Sure. So since our launch, we've taken on um, projects where we are an owner's rep for a viral vector research uh, project actually installed in Texas. And we also have a uh, construction management project uh, where we have actually that project would be a construction executor of the entire project overall uh, in Houston, Texas for a company that's coming out of phase three development. And we have another project um, in California for a company that is moving away from CMO manufacturing and using other people's facilities to being able to produce their own products in-house. Excellent. Um, 
And I and I can I can see you you trying to your the wheels turning so you don't share too much. So uh, thank you for <laughs> keeping you know what you for sharing what you can share. Um, well, uh, gentlemen, that uh, wraps up the questions that we have. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of questions still out there um, for people who are tuning in to watch. Um, there's a lot of questions that are still out in the industry and people who still uh, require the help, especially those who are integrating to uh, a modular and what we call podular solutions. Um, so um, I will include the contact information uh, for these four gentlemen in the uh, description if you're watching this on our YouTube channel. Um, and at the end of this video, you'll have our contact information. So if you'd like to reach out and ask any specific questions in addition to what you've heard today, uh, please feel free to shoot them an email. Um, but as for today, Pete, Roman, Blake, and Mark, thank you all very much for being part of this virtual roundtable. And uh, until next time, good to see you all. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Brittany, for having right. me in this. Absolutely. Have, have a great day. Bye now.